Welcome. I'm Daniel Himmelstein, part of the Biology and Medical Informatics program here at UCSF. I'll be talking today about my research, Understanding Disease Through the Lens of Heterogeneous Networks. This is research I'm performing with my PhD advisor, Sergio Berenzini. Networks fascinate me. Let me tell you why. I have over 1,200 friends on Facebook. We'll call these friends nodes. Between them, there are about 40,000 friendships. We'll call the friendships edges. Together, they form a network. And using the right layout, we can, get a, we can visualize the network. So I've done that here in a way that places friends together if they have a lot of connections. And what emerges is a structure that accurately represents the different communities that I've participated in throughout my life. For example, my mom is one of 16. Her family forms a very tight cluster in the corner here, away from the rest of my network. My hometown, which I lived in for over half my life, forms the largest cluster. And my brother is the bridge between the hometown and kin parts of the network. What I find amazing here is that with the right analysis technique, what would otherwise be a hairball can be organized into a structure that gives great insights on my past engagements. I decided that I want to apply these techniques of network analysis to biology, specifically the biology of disease and understanding what causes the genetic uh, inheritance and susceptibility for complex human diseases. I realized that I need a much more complex network to represent all this information. So in contrast to my Facebook network, I created 19 types of nodes, for example, genes, diseases, tissues, pathways, and 20 types of edges to connect all of them. Now this was new for bioinformatics, which previously had only looked at networks with one type of node and edge, not the heterogeneous type that I thought was necessary to capture all the information. The network was large, about 30,000 nodes and 1.6 million edges, but we found a technique and developed it to be able to predict for a specific gene and a specific disease the probability that the gene uh, conferred susceptibility for that disease. And the method was a success. It was able to predict future studies that we hadn't shown or given to the method. Additionally, it was able to provide insights on what was important and what underlied a pathogenic variant. We found that these signatures of perturbations in cells were highly informative. This is something the field had previously overlooked. Additionally, we were able to discover three novel multiple scler sclerosis genes. These genes replicated in a study with over 10,000 individuals with and without the disease. We put our predictions online, hopefully, so other researchers can use them to help with uh, their own studies, to help with disease diagnosis and prediction, and finally developing new treatments for the future.